Hello again, and welcome to another exciting episode of Backstage Showcase. I'm your host, Andrew Bermudez, and today we are going to be talking about yet another bit of our media that we are really going to delve into and look at how it was made. But first, I want to give a shout out to that incredible announcement we had earlier today. I mean, imagine our movies that we have made for so many years are finally going to be in this popular Toys to Life video game. Can you believe that? Well, if you did, ha! April Fools! Did you seriously think that our movies were going to be coming to LEGO Dimensions? Ah, uh, yeah. Actually, this particular joke for today is the subject of today's Backstage Showcase. As you might have guessed, all this box art and all this other artwork and all that that was created for this joke was all faked, obviously. Um, but where exactly did this idea come from? That is what I want to cover today. To start, let's go all the way back to July 2016. So at this time, it had been a month since the, uh, the announcement for year two of LEGO Dimensions had been made. So they had mentioned all the new properties that were going to be introduced into the game. And I was thinking to myself, what if my own films were in the game? What would that look like? And then at the same time, for some odd reason, I was thinking about how weak, to be honest, my 2016 April Fool's Day prank was about YouTube Red, and then I thought to myself, ah, I could really make up for it with an April Fool's Day joke regarding this game. So that is where this all started. Development for this joke started almost immediately after I had come up with the joke. So, the first thing that I did was I wrote up sheets sheets and all that to uh, conceptualize what are the different expansion packs that could theor theoretically be made based off of Mustache Maniacs Film Co. movies. So I first made a list of all the potential characters that could be introduced into the game hypothetically, and then from there I made a LEGO Digital Designer mo conceptual models highlighting what the different packs would look like. So in the early stages, one of the things I wanted to make sure was in order to make the joke convincing, I had to make it look real. I had to make it feel real. But at the same time, at the end of the day, people would still be able to realize this was all just a joke. Part of making it feel real was looking at what the real waves of expansion packs contained. So by using that and looking at the different types of expansion packs, I was able to then extrapolate and then create ideas from there. And also I realized that because of certain time constraints, even though I had almost a year to prepare this joke, to be perfectly honest, it was more about eight months in total that took me to make this. Um, but because there was still that time restraint, and also I had to make it feel believable, I could only do so much for the announcement. So I couldn't make all of these packs that I had written up, hadn't had brainstormed and things like that. So really quickly, I want to go through several of the expansion packs that didn't make it into the final cut of the joke. So First off, we have a few expansion packs based on the Dino Attack role-playing game, including a hypothetical story pack. And then we also have expansion packs based on other various films um, and other different ideas that I came up with. Um, funny thing, if, as you can see here, originally I wanted to feature Freddy and Joey in Corn Farm and Night Guard with this joke, but I decided to ditch both of them. And then I also painted this painting over the course of several months to act as a promotional image for this fake wave of expansion packs. As with pretty much all of my digital artwork, this painting actually started out as a physical drawing that I drew on paper just to get my idea across. And then I scanned that in and then in Photoshop, I created the entire painting over this drawing 
And you, if you look at this closely, if you look at the drawing closely, I should say, and compare it to the finished painting, which you can see here, you can notice a few differences that I made. Most notably, I changed the costume that Com 50 is wearing to best match the pieces that I used for the physical figure for the fake box art. Speaking of that fake box art, here is some of the box art that was featured in today's prank. So, when, like I said, one of the things I was thinking about when making these was to generally make them look convincing, but I also wanted a few, put a few discrepancies in there so that if you look closely, you would realize that this was all actually a joke. So, for example, you might notice a few differences from the real box art. For example, the fake box art doesn't have the piece count, it uh, doesn't have certain details, the glow behind the character on the top half of the box art isn't as stylized as it is on the real box art, and the list of little details goes on and on and on. You'd have to look closely. Interestingly enough though, there were two pieces of box art that did not make it into the final cut. Here are them right now. I did, the reason why they didn't was because I wasn't able to get the little buildable vehicles built and photographed in time for the prank. But here they are, the, unfin the two unfinished pieces of box art for this joke. And now I want to quickly cover the trailer video that was unveiled earlier today. Now, officially, it's considered a reveal video, but the reason why I'm calling it a trailer is because initially, I was going to animate an entire trailer. You see, when I came up with this idea, I was still working on the film Ninjago Visions of Memories. And I realized, as I was thinking to myself, well, Ninjago is already in the game, why not use this set? to further uh, exemplify that and work it into what's already there and then then integrate the stuff that would be hypothetically introduced with this joke and then animate this whole trailer. The problem is is that when I was calculating time and everything I was thinking to myself do I really want to spend this amount of time making a trailer for an April Fool's Day joke when I could be using that time to be working on, say, Pharaoh's Quest, The Curse of Onset Raw? The answer was no, but not before I had already finished filming the ending of the trailer, which is the soundstage footage that's featured at the end of the finished reveal video. What the ending of the reveal video does have, though, is more or less a proof of concept about mouth animation. You see, several years ago, I had uh, experimented with mouth animation in short films such as Sam and Bob Brawl. The problem was there was that I had just warped the existing mouth in the footage, so it just looked like this little blob was just undulating and it just didn't look right when it came to the mouth animation. Especially didn't create the accurate mouth shapes that people make when they say certain words. So with this concept though, what I did was I downloaded a package of ping files that are different minifigure mouths and then in After Effects created a composition that is just the mouth synced to the dialogue and then imported that into the finished footage. You made it a cylinder and then animated the cylinder to the minifigure's head so that and then it made it cover the mouth on the actual minifigure's printing so that it made it look like that the director minifigure here is actually talking. So once you put it all together, you have an April Fool's Day joke that at first looks convincing, but as it builds up towards its climax, it eventually hits that climax, and then at the end you just realize it's all an April Fool's Day joke. Happy April Fool's Day, and thank you for watching this episode of Backstage Showcase. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find more great videos like this one, as well as find the actual April Fool's Day video reveal from earlier today. And, if you haven't checked it out already, be sure to visit our official website at mustachemaniacsfilmco.webs.com and don't forget to also visit our wiki, our press room, and all the other parts of our network. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.